Hey everybody, welcome back to Mead Monday and the Mead Masters Guild. I'm here with my good friend again, Courtney. Hey everyone. And today we are drinking the James Cameron Classic. Stay tuned. All right, today we are drinking the James Cameron Classic Mead from Chinook uh, Meadery again. And um, there wasn't overly much on this wine um, on the website and that from reading. Um, got a few ideas for pairing and stuff, uh, a little bit that can, Courtney can go over here. And uh, tell us a little more that we found. Yeah, if you tuned in with us before, there was an episode I was on that we went over the Cherry Name More from Chinook. And I went over a lot of their, what the organization is, some of the courses that they offer, some of the festivals that they attend, they have food truck, so on and so forth. So there will be a description, a link, or in the description, a link. <laughs> I speak English. And, um... You can click on that and get some more information there, or you can go to their website at www.shinnookhoney.com. They did win an award in 2015, the Bronze Mazer. Yeah, the Bronze Mazer Cup. Um, you see that a lot of beer, craft beers and wines and things like that. There's, um, there's your regional um, festivals and things like that. There's your state or provincial, national, international, where beers and wines go to, to compete and things like that. The Mazer Cup um, happens in Colorado every year, and it's strictly just meat. It meets from all over the world come, and they come here to compete. And they did win bronze at the 2015 with this meat at the Mazer Cup. But, you know, there's more. You shall give her a go. Mm -hmm. Long table. So it said to pair this with, you know, spiced chicken or pork or something. So I've provided a couple different items. We did a hot smoked chicken thigh. Yep. On the Traeger, with some applewood uh, smoking pellets, I believe. Yep. Uh, there's a couple pieces of bacon there, um, just regular, plain old bacon, and a couple samosas that are actually quite spicy. So we're going to see how the spicy plays off. I also, for just <clears throat> science, <laughs> have a tiny bowl of salty buttered popcorn with a little bit of a chocolate drizzle. So we're going to see if that changes anything from yeah. the spiced meat and everything yeah if i believe they said this is um like an off sweet so we'll kind of see how this how this goes all right mm -hmm. all right well let's take a look Ooh, this got legs legs for days oh yeah this is this is thick very thick like the legs are like they're stopping yeah they're literally it's coating. like it's like you roll it up on the glass and it's just like nope <laughs> i'm spider-man i'm sticking here yeah like it's, it still hasn't gone down no so if that gives you any indication of how um, thick <laughs> this particular meat is, uh, that would do it. And that usually akins to like when they add the like how much money or how, how much, much money? money, how much money, well, how much honey, honey is money technically. So. Honey is money. How much honey they add, and there's sometimes to back sweeten after they do their initial fermentation, they'll add honey in the end to bring it up to the sweetness that they want. So that can also be as well as a lot of unfermented honey that is still in the mead. And it's pretty clear and pretty golden, too. Yeah, considering if it has the legs that it does. Thick uh, thighs. I don't know. <laughs> ooh, ooh. It smells of strong honey. It also has a slight... I can't place it. I would say almost pear-type smell to it. A like, the hint of something, like, pearish there, yeah. Oh, it even tastes like it has a little bit of pear in it. Mm hmm I believe they said there was a note, almost a note of something, some, there's some fruit or apricot um, hints in here as well, I believe, if I remember correctly from their description as well, but, oh yeah. It's really good. It's really good. It is really good. Off sweet, I, I almost, if that's, that, describing it as an off sweet, I'd say it's definitely in that section to the sweeter side of the section. Yeah, I, I don't see how this is an off sweet at all, to be perfectly yeah. honest. It is, this is a sweet to me. This is like a sweet traditional style. Yeah, Mead. It, it doesn't have any fruit, it doesn't have any herbs, it's just mm -hmm. simple fermented honey. Yeah. And it is scrumptious. By the oh, way. absolutely. And I just realized I should probably grab a plate and just put it over for the thing. Oh, you, Courtney came prepared. I do that. A little too well, if you ask some of my close friends. There's no such thing as being too prepared. Day at the beach, it's like cooler and poor carry-on. There's nothing wrong with that. 
And yet, I still get sunburned. Because that is my life. I brought napkins. <laughs> fancy napkins and fancy plates. <laughs> yeah. Fancy. All right. You want some chicken? I will try some chicken. Why have we put one of everything on the plate since I actually have a plate? Actually, very true. And this is a bacon. This is a bacon. And, and a samosa. samosa. So do we want to go from the least spicy to the most spicy just so we don't have that linger? Sure. So bacon first. And bacon goes well. I support. That should be a shirt. Bacon first. Yes, <laughs> bacon first. But first, bacon. <laughs> mm. It makes it taste like a honey glazed bacon. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I still get a bit of that pear though. A tiny bit. There's a there's a tiny bit of that fruit taste that just kind of hides under the honey. Mm -hmm. I do like it. Like it goes almost like halfway between pear and apple. Mm -hmm. It's like not a hard apple either, but kind of a subtle apple. Mm -hmm. I find not something like intensely tart like a Granny Smith and not more like probably on the sugary side like a Fuji or something like that. It was really good though. Mm -hmm. I don't think it changes too much of the flavor profile though. Bacon goes with everything. Bacon goes with everything? I agree. I just find it didn't really taste or change the taste of the meat all that much. No, I, I think it's just when they had them together, it's literally just taste like honey and bacon. 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 That was it. Yeah. Which is not a bad thing. No, this is a it's a good pairing. It just does no change in the flavor profile. Yeah. But we did just freshly smoke this chicken right before the episode here. Mm -hmm. So it I'm just salivating all day. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I wish you could hear the crunch of the skin. It is so crispy. You need to invest like taste division or something because this is freaking amazing. This is chicken alone. Hmm. So this is like a slightly like I would say like sort of seasoning salt with rosemary in it. Yeah, like a Memphis style rum. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It cuts the heat down. It cuts the spice of the heat down. It actually makes it a little sweeter. Mm -hmm. It goes kind of from, yeah, that lowers the spiciness a bit, kind of raises the sweetness of the chicken a bit. Which I don't mind. That's actually pretty good. Yeah, it goes more apple, I find, with the spice. It, it does. The, the chicken brings out definitely the apple apple hints that we're tasting in here. Okay. Next, we have a super, well, I wouldn't say super spicy, but they do have a big kick. Mm -hmm. So for those of you that... Are a little bit more sensitive to spices this would be really hot <laughs> i mean i'm not a like a spice loving guy i think out of me and my siblings my brother loves spice i don't think there's anything that is too hot my sister was salt and i was sour <laughs> it's kind of weird but it worked out that looks way looks like we got spinach and paneer so i don't know if that's if that's beef or if that's chickpea or i'm not overly familiar with what always random is samosas samosas are good i just love samosas Again, cuts the heat down a bit, but the crunch coming off of like the batter, the crust, or whatever the, the wrapping. Smells, the wrapping it, it changes that a little bit in that taste. Hmm. A little bit. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of hard to, hard to describe it. It's again the appley. I would. I definitely say it goes more appley. Like it goes well because typically, like certain chutneys have quite a bit of sweetness to them. Mm. So it typically goes well with samosa. I find when I took a sip, it almost made the, the, the heat feel a little bit sharper. I don't know how to describe that really. It could be a, just something I'm experiencing personally because I took more of the filling in that bite when you took mm. more of like the outside, but yeah. it, oh, almost, no, it almost makes you feel the, the, the heat a little bit sharper, but oh, not, to the point where, not to the point where I can't feel the inside of my mouth. Yeah, no, not like your mouse in Inferno, but it's like, I, I get it. It's, it almost kind of intensifies all the flavors in there with like the vegetables and everything and the heat a little yeah, bit. Yeah, and the feeling of the heat. It almost feels yeah. prickly when if, before it was like kind of a soft burn. Yeah, I mean kind of like a mild buffalo sauce is kind of the way I can describe it. Yeah. But yeah, no, this just kind of raises it up just a little bit. 
Which that's a serious. It's isn't a, a bad very thing. good accompaniment, it though. Like it, it, it's very tasty. Especially for these, if you do like, if you are a fan of spicy food, this kind of just gives it. Feels like it just gives it a little extra. But all right, now for the it, chocolate drizzled salt buttered popcorn. As we've seen in a previous episode, when we had our unicorn spread, this is this is like. Yeah, the chocolate's purple. The chocolate's purple. <laughs> we we harvested it right from a unicorn. <laughs> Ground up unicorn. <laughs> Alright, just give it a go. It's pretty and it tastes good. Because mm -hmm. it was violent. <laughs> it's like crack, really. It is, it is freaking crack. I really get the pear in that. I get the pear, but it's like... It tastes like pear jelly. It, it does. It tastes like a pear... Like pear jelly with kind of that festive feeling of the birthday cake ish, but not, but again, more the jelly ish. Like, like, have you ever had like the pears in syrup? Yes. That's exactly the sensation I'm getting. Like, yeah, where it's like that thick syrup you pour it out, or like you yeah. eat the pears and you like take a shot of it back. That That is exactly what I'm kind of, you're right. That is so cool. It's probably the th because of the thickness of the honey in there. Well, that and the addition of the chocolate and then the salt, probably yeah. making the sweetness a little bit more intense. Like I said, I'm not Taste of diabetes. I'm not trained <laughs> trained or educated in this. I'm just relaying my experience. Oh absolutely. Yep, yeah, try that again. It tastes like pear sections and it, it literally syrup. tastes like you opened a can of pears and just started like just mowing down on them. That is crazy. But instead of soft, it's got that little tiny crunch in it because it's pop the popcorn. You know, if we ever nuts. visit Chinook, we'll have to bring a small bag of that and get them to try that. I think so. Because that's really cool. It changed the entire flavor profile. It is. It went from just like honey-esque with a little bit of pear, but it's like the honey, instead of it being a pronounced flavor, it's, it, it was literally just felt like the catalyst just for the mm. thickness of the sweet, of, of like you said, the jelly or that syrup. Yeah, it, it's crazy. That's I literally feel like I'm drinking pear juice. I used to shock on that stuff as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> Not so much. <laughs> Not anymore, but that's that's nuts. That's crazy how that works. Mm -hmm. It's kind of weird. From the one section we have like the heat where it accentuates the heat and kind of... Complements it, yeah. Yeah, complements it. kind of brings out the different flavors of the vegetables and stuff and the samosa. And the spices, yeah. And the spices and that. And then going from like you're totally eating like a can of fruit. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's nuts. nuts. Oh. Uber delicious though. Oh, absolutely! Like, congrats to Chinook for this. This is this is freaking awesome. And I mean, I have generally more of a sweet tooth myself as opposed to dries. That's just my personal preference. But oh, I love this. Oh, yeah, that was. I'm still mm -hmm. shocked. <laughs> mm -hmm. that, that was quite the flavor difference. That was. If you definitely get a chance to, like, I'd say pick up this bottle. And I mean, we've seen Courtney on here before, bringing different kinds of food and just. I'm new to the whole thing of wine or like mead pairings with food, but it's kind of nuts just how like the different flavors that pop up. Like I was not, ex like I said, I was not expecting I <laughs> a can of like syrup, syrupy pears coming in there. It's not, it's cool. Yeah, like it completely, like the honey's completely gone. It just tastes like canned pears and syrup. That's nuts. I almost wonder, like, it's sweet, but what if you had something like, you know those, you buy that jar of like honey coated salted nuts, like peanuts and almonds and stuff, how that would work kind of with this, with that like almost like the saltiness and the sweetness mixed. I think you'd have to be careful with the kind of nut because I know peanuts have a very strong flavor where almonds, depending if they're roasted or not. Same thing with like pecans, like how yeah, they're like sweeter. And... They're sweeter, but like raw almonds have obviously have a more subtle flavor where smoked almonds or, um, pardon me, roasted almonds. Yeah. Definitely that flavor is quite intense. Mm -hmm. So I think the popcorn is like a good vessel because it's a fairly... Popcorn's fairly neutral by yeah. itself. It just accents any flavors that you have drizzled over it. Because everything's good with butter. Duh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like. But as we try and hit it again, we have the horn again because it's the official mead drinking vessel. Yes, I am stroking the horn. You don't need to make a joke in the comments below. You still can. You know, it's a free country. <laughs> <laughs> <Stro <laughs> I'm trying to keep composure as I pour this. You're welcome. <laughs> Make this hard, Courtney. You're not helping. Wording. Phrasing. Phrasing. Are we doing phrasing again? Yeah, I think we're going to have to. 
Oh. If there are any Archer fans out there, subscribe. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, that's good though. I know. Like I'm not getting now that I've had a chance for my palate to kind of cleanse itself. I don't taste that that's that canned pear at all. No, I think it was the chocolate, the salt from here that yeah. really gave it that kick. At least the for the chocolate for the sweetness kick. Yeah, but I think the salt definitely played up the sweetness in the mead, and I don't know. It's just the honey completely disappeared mm -hmm. for me, and it was just like pear syrup. Abs yeah, no, like, <laughs> like it was literally drinking a can of pear syrup. It was it was just crazy how it came off like that. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. No, it, it was really. Tasty. I mean, I kind of want to do not get... taste the booze as much. So hey. <laughs> Yeah, it's one of those things that goes down dangerously easy. Oh, now I kind of want to go get a can of pears and eat it. <laughs> yeah, we don't promote drinking and driving here, so he's staying put or I'm going to beat him to death. Don't do that either. Just, no. Those are his options. But no, absolutely. Like, just in, I find too, especially with a traditional style mead, where it is literally just, Honey, water, yeast, and then the change for traditional comes from the back sweetening of if you're adding honey, how much honey you're adding if you add. Well, not only that, but depending on what the bees are making the honey from. Is it clover honey? Is it wildflower honey? Exactly. But on that sense, is it's where they add the honey in the fermentation process for the is for the sweetness level. Mm. But just on that, it's it's crazy just how it can kind of go from just straight honey. And how it can just accent things like heat, sweetness, and saltiness, and things and that, and just make you taste things you just weren't absolutely expecting at all. Yeah. That's really crazy. It's a bit of a mind game. Mm-hmm. Because I can't say the F-bomb, or else we don't get monetized. <laughs> it's a mind. <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, you know, definitely, I, I definitely give huge kudos to Chinook. Like, the, obviously, the, the award shows their hard work mm -hmm. and dedication to this craft for this, this beverage. I, I love their stuff. Again, I tried their cherry. We did their cherry meeting more previously, and it was something, again, that was I was totally unexpected. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. Um, if you like, leave a comment in the script and comment below, like, what foods would you like? Do you like spicy? Do you like saltiness, sweetness, sour? What foods would you try and try with a, maybe a traditional style meat to see what it would accent, take away, or even add? Leave, a, leave that comment below. Hit the bell option for when you see... Um, or when we post more videos so you're notified, we'll leave a description to all of our social media below. But as always, thank you for Courtney for hosting us here again. Yep. And we will see you next time. Bye. Peace.